Hi, I'm Janelle, previously known as Serious Cakes. I will get right to the point. I am not back. I will put my reasons down below. The reason I'm posting this video is because I want to try and reach as many people as possible. And I'm not on Facebook anymore, but since there's still at least 40,000 subscribers to this, I thought that this would be the best way to get the word out. Today I'm going to an event that is at a friend's church and they are trying to raise money to fight against human trafficking. I will post the link below if you are interested in donating or hosting your own event. That's actually why I'm dressed like this, because I'm going to try to raise money by playing ping pong. And if people can score a point against Wonder Woman, then that will we will match that point with a dollar for every point that they can get off of me. My husband's also going to be playing as a specific character. I also want to say there is another charity event that we were involved with and I will post a link to that too if you want to see me acting like an idiot for about three minutes. This is right up your alley. So now on to the non-important stuff. I will tell you about the cake that I made for the event. I They were having a silent auction for this event and I wanted to help them raise more money so I thought well I'll make a really pretty cake and they can auction that off. I haven't made a cake in a while. It's probably been at least since last spring, I made a cake for my nephew's wedding. So I'm a little bit rusty. It's been even longer since I made cream cheese frosting, which is what I had decided to do for this cake. So I started out with the standard cream cheese frosting recipe that's out there. I didn't use my own. I didn't want to use Crisco. I just wanted to do the butter and the cream cheese. I did one stick of butter, one eight ounce package of cream cheese, and three cups of powdered sugar. I tripled that and ended up with way too much frosting, but that's beside the point for now. Anyway, the idea was I wanted to incorporate certain flavors into this. A while ago, I had had coffee that was called blueberry crumble coffee, and I thought the combination of the coffee plus the blueberry plus whatever they put in there to make it taste like a blueberry crumb cake was absolutely delicious. So I want to try to translate that into a chocolate cake. So I use my standard chocolate cake recipe. The link will be below. I put in a layer of cream cheese, a layer of crumbled up Biscoff. Oh, Biscoff is so good. It was a mistake for me to find out how good Biscoff is. But anyway, crumbled up Biscoff and then those were the two middle layers. On the outside, I had made this blueberry compote that I separated. I strained it out so that the blueberries were separate from the liquid. And my thinking was, I'll just add the blueberries to the frosting and then I'll just frost the cake. That shouldn't be any problem, right? Yeah, so that's what I did. And it was soup. I was trying to frost the cake with soup. Um, I was able to get it to stick. I did a very thin layer, but just the same, I was sitting there looking at that and I'm like, how can I ever make this pretty? This is one of the ugliest cakes. I, and, and I've made some ugly cakes, but this has got to be one of the ugliest cakes I've ever made. And I was having flashbacks from before I learned about the, before I learned about how frosting works, I was having flashbacks of when I used to make frosting and they would say, add liquid, add milk until it's the right consistency. Well, you can go from thick to soup like that with just a tablespoon of liquid. So uh, I was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is just terrible. At least it tastes good. So I got it. I just, I decided to walk away and let's see if the frosting will stick to the cake. I was just, I figured I'll, I'll come back in a half an hour and it'll be a you know, just like a skirt falling down. Thankfully, it didn't do that. It held on to the cake, but I was like, well, my plan was to take the liquid that was left over and have it be either a, like a drip sauce around the sides, you know, or I would make a dam around the top of the cake and that would hold the sauce in place. But as I'm stirring the sauce, I'm like, this has got to be the thinnest stuff ever. It's like water. This isn't going to work as a drip sauce. It'll just be a puddle at the bottom and no one will ever know what happened. It'll just, it would look so scary. So I could have boiled it down more or added more sugar to it to make it thicker. 
but I knew if I did that, it would ruin it because it was already hyper sweet as it was. So I couldn't go with that idea. Instead, I piped a dam. I'm looking at the dam. I'm like, that's not going to work. I piped another border around it to create a double dam. And I carefully spooned the sauce into onto the top. And it, I, I knew it wasn't going to work. As I'm spooning the sauce, it's eating away at the frosting. So you could see there's weird wisps of cloudiness that's messing up. And I'm like, you know what? I am not taking this cake to the event. I do not want to try to get anyone to buy this cake. Instead, I will take it to where my husband works and I will pawn it off on them and I will go get some more supplies and I will start over. So I quick baked another cake. I let it cool just briefly enough to like get the cake out of the pans. And I took the cake to where my husband works. Before I even got the cake to the car, the dam burst and the sauce was all over. I'm like, as I'm putting the cake in the car, I notice I've got the sauce on my glove. I, I look down, it's on my jacket. I'm like, huh, that, this is perfect. I'm glad that it happened to this rather than me trying to take it to this event. So I took it into work and I was handing it my, to my daughter who was working that day too. And I said, here's a train wreck. And she's like, I can see that it's a train wreck. What in the world happened? I'm like, I will tell you later. Dropped the cake off, went and got new supplies, started again. This time, instead of making a triple batch, because I realized that was far more frosting than I would need. I never know. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, I know this will be enough to fill and frost the cake, but will it be enough to decorate? And I always want to have plenty to decorate. Well three is just too much. Two was perfect. The issue was this time around, I get the frosting made and it's so thick. As I'm spreading it on the cake, you'll see in the video, it's tearing the cake and pulling backwards. Ow, I know how to frost a cake. I do. It's like muscle memory. That's the easiest part. But I was like, it was like, I was literally pushing it, pushing it, pushing it into the cake to try to get it to spread. I would describe it as trying to frost a cake with a water balloon. That's how easy this stuff was spreading on the cake. So once I got this time around though, I did a layer of frosting. I put the blueberries on top of that. And then I put the crumbled up Biscoff on top of that. And I layered it up like that. Oh, I also brushed the cakes first with the remaining liquid. That cake is moist as it is, but I just, I didn't want to lose that sauce because the sauce, even though it was sweet, it's really, really good. I do plan on making this again, but I will definitely cut down on the, it, it calls for maple syrup, but I'm going to cut down on the maple syrup. Frozen blueberries provide enough liquid of their own and they're already a little bit sweet. So there's no need to add more of that. Before I went to frost the cake though, I realized that I needed to fix the frosting. So I put the bowl back on the mixer. I put my whisk attach on it and I gave it a good beat until, because I actually, normally you don't want to add more air to frosting. But in this case, I did want to add air because air was going to turn it from being fudge-like consistency to lighter and fluffy. Now, for those of you who don't know, when you're making cream cheese frosting, even though it might be super thick, it's also very soft. So if you start adding liquid to that, Again, it will go from thick to soup like that. So I did not want to add more liquid to that and then have the same issues that I had the first time around with the blueberries added in. So I did not add any more liquid to it. I knew, I thankfully I did know that trick that I could just beat it up with the whisk attachment. So now as I'm going to frost the cake, you could see that it's, it's lighter in color. That's one thing. As you add air in, it lightens up the color. So it became lighter in color and it was far easier to spread. I was able to frost the cake in no time flat. However, because this is cream cheese frosting, I also know that the odds of it crusting over and me being able to use the Viva towel technique was probably not going to work. I had to make dinner. This was one really long day. I had to go make dinner. So while I was making dinner, I was, I just left the cake alone and tried to let it crust and it did crust. But the thing is, I was so tired at this point that I didn't want to take the time to try to work with the towel. I 
I'd had plenty of energy. If this had been what happened in the morning, I wouldn't have had a problem with just taking like a good half an hour to 45 minutes to work on making that cake nice and smooth. I didn't want to do that. I was tired. I was ready to finish this cake off and be done. So instead of worrying about that, as you can see in the video, I did try a little bit and then I tried to use my hand. The issue with using my hands are in general, my hands are so hot. So I will melt the frosting. It certainly works in taking out the wrinkles in the frosting, but as soon as you pull it up, I've melted the frosting and it's now sticking to the paper towel. No more of that. So instead I decided to decorate the cake. I think I used a number three tip to just draw scrolls all over the place. Some of the scrolls are not so great, but you know what? It doesn't matter because once you start adding some flowers and some leaves, you don't see the ugly scrolls as much. And that was my goal. I said, I'm not going to focus on those. I'm not going to pull them back off. If the cake was only about the scrolls, I would have taken the time, pulled them off with a toothpick and gone back and redrawn some better scrolls. But I knew I had a plan in mind. I knew where I was going with this. So in the end, I took a 101 tip, which is a super small petal tip. I made a few flowers all over the cake and then I did my 352 and I made some leaves. So here is the end result. That is how it turned out. Thank you so much for watching. I don't know if I'll be doing any more videos in the future. I might here and there because every once in a while I do make a cake. It's just so rare. But please consider donating to this cause. It's a very, very good cause. Thank you so much. Bye.